So about 25 years ago, I did a PhD in molecular biology in Paris at the Institut Jacques Monod with uh, Dr. Jean-Claude Bay in <coughs> studying the chicken immune system. Immunology, like neurology, is a really complex and fascinating subject. And in the mid-80s, um, many immunologists were preoccupied with the concept of God. God stands for the generation of diversity. The question we're asking is, has the immune system produced a potentially infinite number of antibodies from what has to be a limited number of genes? And as I was finishing up my research, I became interested in photography. Soon the interest became an obsession, and I started literally seeing in black and white. And that, that obsession remains to today, and uh, 25 years later I'm still obsessed. So the question I'm asking myself tonight is, how did studying molecular biology help me become a, become a good photographer? <clears throat> and I think the answer is, you know, most people feel that they have nothing in common. But in fact, they have a lot because they're both really creative fields. And my favorite definition of what a scientist is comes from Neil Yarn. He says the role of a scientist is to replace a preconceived idea with a better one. And if you take away the word scientist and replace it with artist, I think you've got a really good def definition of what the artist does as well. So there's a couple of things that I learned as I was doing, um, <clears throat> as I was studying in Paris. And the, the first one that was that really keeps me going to this day was passion. <clears throat> it's really difficult to teach creativity. And I think the best method is by example. The, the experience of working with really creative and passionate scientists for three years taught me really all that I needed to know about being successful. And, you know, in the last 25 years as I've become a photographer and turned it into a career, one of the things I've always tried to maintain is that passion. And when I find sometimes in my career that I'm not as passionate as I was, I'll go off and I'll do a project like this. Last year I went to Pushkar in India. There's a camel fair every November. And I set up a small studio and I started taking a series of portraits. And these were some of them. Great. So, I think the best thing about the scientific education I got was that it taught me how to learn. Um, when I, this is the first, the first major campaign I shot was for Absolute Vodka. We did the cities of Europe. At the time, I used to use a camera that looked like this. It was a 4x5 play camera, and I was essentially using technology that hadn't changed for 100 years. And for about the next 10 years of my career, I continued using this technology. We got that, we shot all our absolute cities, and not to shoot. And then about 10 years later, a couple of my clients asked me, did I shoot digitally? And honestly, I didn't. And I went, well, I will be soon. The transition from you know, silver halide photography to digital photography was enormous. Um, it, it, um, everything that you knew about photography was literally upended. Um, with, with film, you, know, you put your film in the camera, you exposed it, you processed it in chemicals, and you gave it to your client and your job was over. Now we're suddenly putting this black box on the back of a camera, connecting it to a computer, taking a picture, looking it on a screen that's separated from the computer. And, and there were so many questions. It was really new technology. We were using software that was buggy. You know, where was the photo? What was the photo? You know, with film, I knew where my photo was. With digital technology, what was the photo? What was the format? Am I shooting a JPEG? Am I shooting a TIFF? Um, what color space are you in? All the things that you didn't really have to think about when you had a sheet of film, because a sheet of film was everything in itself. You're, studying, you're suddenly dealing with, as a photographer and digital. And, um, and the pace of change that's happened since then has just continued. Every two or three years, the technology leaps. You know, For example, the first camera I bought was 22 million pixels. It cost about $30,000. You could take eight images and you'd have to wait for two minutes for it to get through the buffer, and it crashed every hour or two. 
Today, you can get a Nokia camera with 43 million pixels. And that's 10 years. So the thing about a scientific education is that it gives you the tools to be able to deal with change at that speed. And, and many photographers haven't been able to make that transition. They simply weren't able to move from something that was analog to digital with all of the complexities. Because you know, when you're shooting commercially, you can't tell your, your client, oh, the computer crashed and all your photos gone. Or I thought I was shooting raw, but in fact I was shooting a, a JPEG and we've got nothing to work with. So here, you know, the first campaign I shot was Absolute Vodka. About 15 years later, they came back and they were rebranding and they asked me to shoot again. And all of this was shot digitally. I have a friend who's a professor at Harvard, and he tells me that the half-life of the courses he gives is now six months. In other words, every six months, he has to completely review about 50% of what he's teaching. And I think that this pace of change is only going to continue. The other thing that I learned was, you know, when you're doing a subject like immunology and especially molecular biology, you're doing generally experiments that take two to three weeks. And it's like a game of snakes and ladders where there's only snakes. You make one mistake, you're back to zero. And that's the kind of discipline that allows you to do photos like this. Here we shot Wayne Gretzky in a restaurant. We had to shoot him in 40 different positions. And we had him for three hours. So when you're shooting something like this, you really need to be precise. You need to be, you need to have, yeah, that's where, you know, you say, molecular biology has got nothing to do with photography. That the discipline that you get from working in the lab for a couple of years, really pays off when you're doing a situation like this. What we did here is because we didn't want to ask him to change his clothes 40 times. In the morning, we set up the restaurant. We got stand-ins to come in with different clothes. We had them sit in every place. We had them interact. And then when Mr. Gretzky came in, we had him wear this gray t-shirt so we wouldn't have a collar, so we wouldn't have to remove that. We had him move from every place. And we had him for two hours, three hours, and we actually let him go out for two, so he was really happy. The other thing about, you know, molecular biology is um, you're really thinking in three dimensions. And again, this is another example of a photo where, you know, we shot, this is a photo that we did for Virgin Digital where we're representing 74 different bands in one photo. So you have, very quickly, Smashing Pumpkins, Matchbox 20, Prince, Queen, Sex Pistols. We shot all these photos in one day. Outdoors, so when we set up in the morning, the sun was over here. By the time we finished in the evening, the sun was over here. We had to shoot everything separately so that in the end, you had all the elements in the correct perspective, correct light, so you could make an image that looks like that. And this is what all the bits look like that you literally put together. Again, this would have been practically impossible to do with film, just simply because one of the things we used to find with film is that when you scanned it, even if it was the same emulsion, it would, the grain would change. With digital, we don't have that problem. And then just simply the volume that we have to shoot. One of the things that, you know, that change has led us to do. Here's another one. We shot this. This is actually on the same street. The Virgin Digital was shot going down this way. This is going this way. It's a street in Hollywood. We shot the horses um, running on the street. Shot the girls separately. And then I went out afterwards and we reshot the horses in a field so we could get them going really, really fast. Here's another example of a complex photo. In, in, this, in this photo, we wanted people to see that only the faces. We wanted you to notice the environment. We wanted you to notice that, you know, the way they are dressed and all that. So what we actually did is we set it up so that in every photo there's a light lighting each individual head. This is an example. So we set up the full photo with everybody in place. Everybody's lit separately. We shoot a clean plate. And then we actually shoot everybody individually. And we put it all together, and here I got it again. So that's great. Cool. Another example of a photo where, OK, great, I guess, carry on. You know, again, shooting everything separately. We're shooting the dive, we're going into a real pool, we're shooting a small pool, we're changing the perspective, we're shooting the desert, and then we're making sure that everything matches from a perspective point of view and from a lighting point of view. The kind of 
experience that, you know, thinking in three dimensions really allows you to go. I'm going to quickly show you two more. Here, we want to tell you not to do drugs, because this is what happens. And not to do drugs, because this is what happens. Okay, I think my time is up, guys. It was great talking to you. Thank you.